Okay, so finally we get to look at the last parameter in the general form of our sine graph or our sine function fx is equal to a sine p multiplies x minus b plus c. Okay, we saw that a or actually absolute value of a gives me the amplitude amplitude in the last video we saw that 360 degrees divided by the absolute value of P gives me the period that is how I get the period and uh, then we saw that C is the center line okay C or Y equal to C actually is the center line well let's just summarize that in a sketch, in other words, how does amplitude, period, and center line influence this uh, a sketch? Well, to draw this, I'll need my center line. So first thing I draw is y is equal to c, my center line. Then the sine function starts on the y-axis. Okay, well, what we've looked at so far starts on the y-axis, and now the amplitude is how high I go above my center line okay, and below my center line so this is my center line plus my amplitude okay, and this is my center line minus my amplitude minus my amplitude that's the lowest point I go the amplitude tells me sorry then the period tells me how quickly should I make a full cycle okay so at 360 degrees divided by P I had to have completed my full graph so halfway I'll have to be halfway a quarter of the way I'll have to be a quarter of the way three quarters of the way so at a quarter of the way I reach my maximum halfway I'm back here three quarters of the way I reach my minimum and then I'm back there again okay and there is my sketch completely done with only the theory I didn't even use any values and yet I can draw this graph all you need to do now is substitute the values that that we need okay and the only other thing we saw that if a is negative then we reflect in the x-axis okay so that would be the value if in front of my sign I have a negative but if P is negative I'll also reflect in the x-axis so if I've already reflected in the x-axis then and I reflect again I'll just get the same graph or I'll just get the same thing here if P is negative so if A or P is negative I reflect in the um, x-axis if A and P is negative <laughs> I'll just get the normal sketch again okay because reflecting twice gives me the original okay now what about B what does B do to the graph okay so we'll again just look at the basic format where we only have a B so in other words sine of X minus B uh, without a P that's multiplying that X minus B and let's do that with an example a very nice example well the example I like to use let's say x plus 90 degrees okay so I didn't minus 90 degrees doesn't matter B is some some value that adds or subtracts the X okay in order to do that let me again just draw uh, draw my uh, little table and remember what I said that X is my input that's the input that I'm or the value that I'm putting in this is actually f of x okay where x is the input okay this is my input angle input angle you know, it's after I've added my 90 degrees I call it my input angle and I'm going to call it theta okay and uh, we know that theta zero gives me sine of theta of zero theta 30 sine of uh, 30 is a half okay theta 45 that gives me 0 comma 71 theta uh, what's the next one 60 degrees that gives me 0 comma 
eight, seven, round it off, theta 90 degrees takes me to the maximum, and then there's a few more, okay, past that one, we get 120, 135, 150, 180, okay, 120 is, this is now just going backwards from here, so that's 0 0.87, 0 0.71, 0 0.5, and 0 again, okay, but this time, when I give an input, in order to get my input angle, I added 90. So, for me to get 0, I would have had to have put in a negative 90, because x plus 90 degrees must be 0. So, negative 90 plus 90 would give me the 0. In order to get 30 degrees, negative 60 has to go in, because negative 60 plus 90 gives me 30. In order to get 45, I would have to put in negative 45, because negative 45 plus 90 would give me the 45. Negative 30 degrees, substituting in, putting in a negative 30 degrees, would give me 60, because negative 30 plus 90 gives me 60. In order to get 90, I only put in 0. If I want this input angle to be 90, then x will have to be 0. 120, what must I add to 90 to get 120? Well, I have to add 30 degrees. 45 degrees to get 135. Uh, 60 degrees to get to 150 and 90 degrees to get to 180 so let's go and draw that okay so there's zero okay and here used to be my original the original graph Okay, or an attempt at the original graph. Okay. That, in other words, just sine of x. That's just sine of x. Where I reach my maximum at 90 degrees. I'm back at the x axis at 180 degrees. I reach my minimum at 270 degrees. And at 360 degrees, I've completed my cycle. I start this over again. Same thing happens on the negative side, just in this opposite direction. Okay, so, but now, sine of theta is 0 when x is negative 90. So, I'm here now. That's my first point. This used to be my point. Okay, that used to be my point when x is 0 sine of x is 0, but now it's sine of x plus 90. And now I see, well, I need to be there because to get to 0, I have to add 90. Okay. And here's my next point. 30 degrees is at and a half. So there's, there's my old point okay, at 30 degrees. But in order to reach this same height, this time I'll have to be at negative 60 at negative 60 degrees to reach that height. Okay, the next point was at 45 gives me 0 0.7 so that's 45 round about there gave me my 0 0.7 over here to reach that same height on this side I'll have to be at negative 45 I'll have to be at negative 45 to reach that same height. Okay, in order at uh, 60 degrees, I'll be at 0 0.87 on the original one. So that's 60 degrees there. Takes me to 0 0.87 here. To reach that same height, I have to be at negative 30. Okay, so there's my negative 30. And then I reach this height. Okay. In order to reach my maximum on the old graph, it used to be at 90 degrees. So these are my old points. It used to be at 90 degrees. Now it's at 0 degrees. Okay. So now I find myself here. Okay. 
Then I see the next one at 30 degrees, I'll be at 0 0.8. So in other words, that point will be here. Okay, 30, 45 would be at 0 0.7. Okay, so that one will be there. 45, 60 will um, give me a half. So at 60 degrees, I'll be there. And at 90 degrees, I'll be back here back on the x-axis. So I hope you notice what happened. My graph has moved. Each coordinate has shifted to the left. Notice that? Each coordinate has shifted to the left so that now my new graph, and I'm just going to predict the rest of it, if that's okay with you, predict the rest of it. In other words, this point has moved there that point will now move 90 units up so the lowest point will now be at 180 the cycle completed was at 360 okay and it will now be at 270 so there we go okay do you notice how this whole graph has just shifted 90 units to the left okay and this is therefore f of x is equal to sine of x plus 90 degrees now just for interest sake and as an introduction to the next uh, lesson on cos this is cos sine of 90 plus x is second quadrant sine is positive in the second quadrant but 90 changes the sign into cos. So this is cos of x. This is actually what the cos graph looks like. But more about that later. For now, let's just focus a little bit more on this one. You notice that the center line has not changed. Okay, so for y is equal to sine x minus b, the center line is still the same, same thing. Okay, also notice the amplitude hasn't changed. It's not stretched vertically at all. How about the period? You might say, okay, well, the period is now 270 because that's when it reaches its, um, its complete cycle. But remember, the period is not when it reaches, but how long is a complete cycle. See, the complete cycle doesn't start at zero anymore. It now starts at negative 90 degrees. Okay, that's where we start. So a complete cycle is still 360 degrees because from negative 90 to 270 is still 360 degrees it's just not starting at zero so the period hasn't changed what has changed well the only thing that really has changed is its position so b is a positional parameter it changes the position now you'll notice that b was or it was x plus 90 degrees and because it we added the thing moved to the left. This is very counterintuitive to most most students. They think, well, I added to the x. Shouldn't it move to the right? Okay, and uh, I find it difficult to explain it to students. And uh, I understand it more or less that the graph has to compensate for the x, the ninety that's added, so it has to move to the left. But one way in which you which might help you to draw this graph is to find the starting point find the well let's call it find the center that's maybe maybe good so in a in the basic one this is the center okay the, there we go that's the center and that's the coordinate 0 comma 0 and that's the coordinate when we have sine of not theta, but just sine of x. If my y is equal to sine of x, then the center is 0, comma 0. If I have that center, then I have the center line. If I have the center line, I, I know where to start. From the center, I find my amplitude. I know where to start, etc., etc. So, how would we find the center, or what is the definition of the center? Well, the definition of the center is where theta is equal to zero in other words where sine of theta 
is equal to zero. Okay, I'm going to define that as the center. Now, if I have, now remember what I said, theta is whatever is the result. So if I have y is equal to a, and that's not a bracket, a sine of p x minus p, sorry, x minus b, plus c, then this is theta. Everything that's inside of the sign would be my input angle, theta. Now I want theta to equal zero, so I want p x minus b to equal zero, which means I want, if I divide both sides with a p, then I get x minus b is equal to 0, because 0 divided by p is 0, so x is equal to b. Okay, so that's the x coordinate of my center. Okay, how about the y coordinate of my center? Well, remember now that theta is 0, which means this whole thing, if, if x is equal to b, well, let's, let's just substitute to find fx, so I'm substituting x with b, I've got a sine, now I'm substituting x with a b, so I get b minus b plus c, b minus b is 0, p times 0 is 0, so I get a sine of 0 plus c, okay, is equal to a times sine 0 gives me sine 0 is 0, a times 0 is 0, so that just gives me c. So the coordinates of the center, the very middle of my graph, is the point b, comma, c. x is b and y is c. b is whatever is being added to this x, and c is whatever is being added outside of the sine function. So x, b is whatever is being added inside the sine, c is whatever is being added outside of the sign and that forms the center line so that if I were to draw my graph all I'll need is my y is equal to c on this line I find the point b okay how do I find b well whatever is inside of this sign just make it equal to zero whatever is inside here make it equal to zero and you'll find b Okay, so that will be my point B, and from here on, I just draw my graph. Okay, well, before I draw my graph, I, I see, okay, how high must I go? Okay, in other words, this height will tell me, this is given by the amplitude. Okay, that's the height I get here, is the amplitude. Okay, and also the depth I reach is... This is also the amplitude. That's also the amplitude. This is where I have to start. From here, I have to draw a full cycle for my period. My period being 360 divided by P. Full cycle must happen in there, which means I get half of that, half of that, half of that. I must reach my maximum here, and I must reach my minimum there. Okay? And then is my graph. Now I don't know where the x and the y axis is at this point. It depends on what b and c is. Okay, And I'll do a whole load of examples I'm sure in the next couple of videos to show just how, the, how simple this can be applied. I'll see you there.